Welcome to Chapter 1, Introduction to HTML. In this section, we're going to discuss what HTML is, what it's used for, and we're going to discuss some of the core concepts of HTML, including tags, other elements, as well as attributes and styling. Okay, so what is HTML? HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language, and it's the language that your browser reads. Whether you're using Internet Explorer, Firefox, Chrome, Safari, all browsers read HTML pretty much in the same way. Um, one thing that can be misunderstood is that HTML is not a programming language. A programming language allows you to describe some sort of process or calculation. HTML is more of, of a way of adding context and structure to text and other content. It's physical, it's not, it doesn't perform calculations. Um, the World Wide Web Consortium creates the standards of HTML. Um, there's HTML, XHTML, XML. This, this series is going to focus on HTML5, which is the newest version. Alright, so the syntax of HTML is pretty simple. Um, it's fairly easy to learn, and I'm sure some of you already know this stuff. Um, but HTML uses a set of tag elements, and the idea is to wrap the content in the tag and the tag will then format the content how you want it to look. For instance, here we have, this is a heading wrapped in an H1 tag, which is a heading tag. So this would be, by default, it would be a large heading. And this is a paragraph, would just be standard paragraph text. Now you can change the size and the look of the headings and paragraphs through CSS, but your browser also has a default setting a default font size for headings and paragraphs. So this is a standard, um, probably the most simple website you'll ever see, but it is actually a complete HTML document. Um, so what I'll do is go through this, what we have here. Um, <clears throat> first of all we have the doc type, and it's very important that the doc type is the first element on the page. This is not a tag. The doc type is not a tag. It, what it does is it's an instruction to the web browser about what version of HTML the page is written in. Um, if this was XHTML, you'd have something different here. You'd have the XHTML doc type. So that should always be number one. Next, we have the opening HTML tag, which obviously we need. Um, it's the top tag always. Yeah, um, I, I don't think you'd ever have anything above that aside from the doc type. And next we have the head, and inside the head we have the page title. We have the opening title tag, the title, and then the closing tag. Now the page title is would usually show up on either the tab of the browser when you're on a, a specific page or in the in the um, the top bar of the browser this wouldn't be displayed only in the actual inner page but this is very important uh, mostly for SEO reasons for search engines because this is what shows up when your site pops up in Google or Bing so it's it's important to optimize these titles um, but that's beyond the scope of this of this tutorial and next we have the closing head tag and after the head we have the body which is obviously the inner the, the main content of, a, of any website and obviously in this we only have a, just a small paragraph obviously this would be there'd be a lot more in here we just have a, a hello world wrapped up in a paragraph tag just for just for show and then we have the closing body tag and then finally we have the closing HTML tag So all HTML tags are either block elements or inline elements. And I'll explain this a little more when we actually build our, our web page. But basically a block level element, it creates a block of content. Um, it creates a, a new line before and after it. Um, an example of a block element would be a paragraph. Now if you have a paragraph, if you have text wrap in a wrapped in a paragraph, then the, there won't be anything before that on that line or after that on that line. It starts a new line always. Now H1 through H6 headings also are block elements, forms, 
you have div tags which are block level um, all of these would create a new line which I'll explain more when we're actually doing our project alright so inline elements um, they don't create new lines like a block level element would so you can have say an a tag which is an inline element run alongside of another a tag and there would be no space there'd be no line break in the middle they could be on the same line so that's an inline level element we have the a tags um, the bold tag is an inline element input tags and input tags actually don't have a closing tag which I'll explain uh, very soon uh, span tags are also inline so all tags have attributes or can have attributes um, and there's there's a number of different kinds of attributes we could have the width or height as an attribute um, the style and as we have here the href attribute which is a URL um, and most attributes if not all are in a name value pair separated with an equal sign so here we can see the attribute name is href and the value is http google.com which is the link um, and just like before we have we have the text wrapped in an a tag which is a link a link tag and we have the text google so what this would look like in the browser would just be the word google and you could click on it and it would be a link um, so attributes uh, they basically just provide additional information about a tag or an element um, and attributes are always always specified in the start tag they're never put in, in the back in the in the ending tag so we have some other common attributes um, the style attribute is a big one uh, the style attribute will allow us to design the layout and the look of our page of certain elements on the page um, and here we have a, an example we have a, a p tag which is a paragraph tag wrapped uh, wrapped around the text this paragraph will be read and we have the style attribute which is the name and then we have the value which is color red now this is a selector this is a style selector color um, there's many different kinds as background color there's width, height, um, we'll get into that in a later section. Um, and here we have the ID and class attributes which will allow us to select a certain element and these are usually used either for JavaScript or CSS if you have an external style sheet. Um, you can connect an ID or a class to an element. Here we have the P tag and we have the ID my paragraph so we could style this in a CSS style sheet um, by just defining this ID and then the properties we want to, to attach to it um, the title attribute it just adds extra info about the element or tag um, and this in most new browsers will be displayed as a tooltip if you hover over it if it's, like right here we have a link and we have the title click to go to some site so this would be a link and when you hover over the link a tooltip would pop up and say click to go to some site singleton tags are tags that do not have a closing tag uh, they can also be called void elements um, an example of a singleton tag would be the image tag the img tag this right here, IMG open tag, IMG close tag is wrong. Only the opening IMG is needed. And this is usually used, or always used with attribute only tags such as image. Um, they can use a trailing slash in HTML. If you're writing XHTML, then the trailing slash is required for it to be valid. But HTML, HTML5, you do, do not need it. Uh, it's usually not used, but I mean, it doesn't it doesn't hurt your document if you do use it. And here we have some examples of tags without a trailing slash. We have the line break, uh, the horizontal line, image, command, 
and this is what they would look like with the trailing slash and in, once again if you're using XHTML uh, which is not covered in this tutorial this is how you would do it so images on an HTML page are defined by the image tag the IMG tag and as we as we talked about in the last slide the image tag is empty aside from its attributes there's no content in between and there's no ending tag it's strictly just the IMG with the attributes and the most important attribute which is needed is the source attribute which is abbreviated SRC and what this does is it points to the the physical location of the image you want to display and you could use an absolute path like this which is the entire URL or you could use a relative path depending on where your HTML file and your image file uh, is on your server. And another needed attribute is the alt tag. Let me just make this a little case. The alt tag, what it does is gives it a, a, a text title. Um, it differs from the title tag as it's not, it's not a tooltip when you hover, it doesn't hover over as a tooltip but what it does is if your image is not found say your image isn't there where it should be this will display um, so say you have a you have a, a logo you might have a logo on your web page but if for some reason the server can't find the logo image you could actually just have your company name as the alt tag so that it would display the name as opposed to just being blank or or anything like that Okay, so the last thing we're going to talk about is separating and styling your HTML. You can style your elements with the style attribute, um, which is what we're going to do in this chapter. Next chapter, we're going to introduce uh, CSS, which is cascading style sheets, where we would have an external file to do all the, all the styling selectors and so forth. Um, CSS is actually preferred, but for this tutorial, for simplicity, we're just going to use the inline style attribute. And what we can use to separate certain certain blocks of HTML, we can use the div tag or the span tag. And the biggest biggest difference between these is the div is a block level element and span is inline. And here we have an example we're using the div tag and we're using the style attribute and then we have the selectors and the values so we have padding which is five pixels we're gonna have first of all we have what we have here is an h1 heading and a paragraph um, very simple and it's wrapped in the div tag with the with padding of five pixels a background color of black and color of white so what this means is this block right here first of all is going to have a padding of five pixels so it's going to have five pixels on each side of it a space with five pixels on each side and the background color of the entire div will be black and the color is actually the text color so the h1 in the paragraph will be white text and i'm going to get into this um, very soon when we start our first project our first small web page so here are some common style attribute selectors. Um, as we as I showed you in the last slide, we can have the color cell selector of red, which would make the text red. Background color, make it blue. Background image, we could actually have an image as the background, and you would just put the location of the image, either absolute or relative. Padding, five pixels, which is the space around it, and margin is similar to padding but there is a difference and I'll get into that in a later section and display block we could also have display inline we could have display none which would hide it all together and here we have some border selectors border style color and width now there's a shorthand way to do this we don't need to have three selectors here we can actually have one called border and then just add the values of each of the style, the color, and the width. So we've covered the basics of HTML syntax and the tag structure. 
In the next section, we're going to create a project that will implement all the techniques that we've learned through this section.